Hey folks, Robbie Payne here with Chrome Unbox again. Today uh, we're going to be doing a comparison, specifically um, pitting the RAM differences against one another between the HP Chromebook 14 and the Acer C720P. I had a few comments uh, between YouTube, the website, Google Plus, asking if I would do this particular comparison without having a crouton running in the background. So for those of you who haven't seen the other videos or who don't know, uh, there's a, an ability to, with Chromebooks, because it's running on a Linux shell, to actually install Ubuntu through the use of a script called Crouton. And it actually allows you to just bounce right back and forth between the two. I do have a video uh, detailing how to get that done. So if that this perks your interest and you want to get that done, I'll put the link in the video or in the description of the video below. Um, but what we're really concentrating here on, um, I do have a fresh install on the Acer. I'm getting ready to send my review unit back. Um, and so I just power washed it and then remembered to do this video. So it's a fresh, uh, fresh install. And then I have logged out of, um, out of Ubuntu on the HP Chromebook 14. And so we are just running Chrome OS at this point on both of these machines. And so the HP 14, uh, over here has four gigs of Ram versus the two gigs here. And so a lot of people were curious whether or not that was going to cause performance issues um, and with, with everything else closed down if we're just in the Chrome OS environment. So what I've done to kind of cut down, cut down time on this video is I've opened up quite a few uh, tabs. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine tabs on each one, the exact same web pages. Uh, I also have running down here at the bottom, we have uh, Keep, I have the File Explorer, I have Pocket Text, which is just a simple text editor. And on one, I've got uh, Google Play Music. The other, I've got Spotify running. So we've got music actually playing. You can hear that. Oh, maybe it's not playing now. Okay, so we are playing music here. I'm going to mute. Let's see if we're still going. And then, so we got music playing over here too. So, uh, just so you know, that music is playing in the background on both. So that's going to chew into some of that RAM on both of them. And that's kind of part of the reason uh, we're doing this. So just to show you really quickly, I do have some pretty uh, intensive websites. Uh, we've got The Verge, Android Central, and Gadget. I've got a video running in the background. I'm going to rewind that on both of these so we don't stop. Uh, we've got Google Plus, we've got Twitter, Facebook, Cloud9, which is an IDE, and Chrome Unboxed. You know, this one I need to get to YouTube here. We'll drag that into the fourth spot. Like I said, I want to have the exact same things running between the two of them. And you can already see, uh, this is kind of giving you some indication. For the most part, it's, uh, it's doing okay. It's a little laggy on YouTube, but I've got a lot of stuff going <laughs> right now. So um, that's not shocking at all. Okay, so we've got that video running in the background. Um, and so there's a lot of things going that are, that are killing RAM. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the point of this video is to see... Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can take three fingers and swipe up and see uh, the open programs. Come on. Well, there it goes. There's a, there's a perfect performance example. Um, again, I'm putting both of these machines under really heavy load. Um, but that three fingers, there it goes. Here, buttery smooth. Um, and we're running all the same stuff. I take that with a grain of salt. Some of that could be, I think the trackpad on the Acer isn't quite as responsive as the one on HP. So that's, that could be part of it. Um, another thing you'll notice, if you do three fingers left and right, you can actually swipe through the tabs. Hopefully you can see that, but there's a little white highlight that just kind of, you can just back and forth. Um, and it's nice and smooth again on the HP. I can just kind of swing through and jump to any, any one of these. 
And the moment I jump to it, uh, scrolling is responsive. So that's a big deal. Um, if you roll to something and you've got to wait five or six seconds for it to load, uh, that can be a little bit annoying. And so really we're seeing these long web pages. We're not seeing any uh, checkerboarding, which is indicative of memory running low. Uh, Android Central is a big page, no checkerboarding there. So the whole page is loaded in. The Verge, oops, The Verge, no checkerboarding there. We do have a drop in frame rate as far as how it's scrolling. Uh, that's not completely surprising on either one because we have some of this parallax stuff going on here. Um, that stuff tends to be heavy, even if that's the only thing open. But ultimately, it is responsive. So went all the way over to Chrome Unboxed. And again, nice and smooth. Whole page is loaded, no problem. Switching through these guys, no problem. Getting multiple tabs open. Uh, none of those issues. Uh, we really see some pretty nice performance going on here with the HP. Back over here, again, we, we saw the three-finger swipe. Um, Select one. Uh, not working so well. Um, we'll use the keyboard shortcut here. And the keyboard one's fine. So, you know, I mean, it's nice and smooth, no issues at all. So, I'm really thinking it could be trackpad response that's going on here uh, with the Acer. Um, let's do some three finger swiping and we see, and you see it really lagging again. Um, just being scientific about it, it could be a mix between the processor, the RAM, um, or the, the tactileness of the, of the touchpad. So I'm not sure. So let's go to Android Central and do quick scroll and see a lot of checkerboarding happen. It's catching up pretty quickly. Um, but a little bit of checkerboarding. Let's move over to Engadget. Same thing, just checkerboarding. But the scrolling is responsive, uh, which is interesting. The two-finger scrolling is perfectly responsive. Um, so that the three finger gesture is not happening is kind of strange. Um, let's look at the, the YouTube videos here. Um, frame rates are good here. It looks like frame rates are holding up just fine over there as well. That's a good thing. Uh, let's move over to Google Plus. Again, usually pretty wretched um, on Chromebooks. And we're dropping some frames here on HP 14. It's not terrible, but there was a couple skips and jumps. here and again yeah dropping some frames but really not unusable at all little issue and responsiveness there but again not not bad not unusable but right there you saw about a second delay let's check out Facebook getting you kind of seeing the same thing kind of a jumpy uh, jumpy scrolling let's try Facebook or Twitter here and a little bit jumpy there too as well Facebook no issues here. Uh, IDE, I just have this loaded just because it's something I actually use. And so I probably am never going to have all these particular tabs open, but I wanted to make sure we're not loading uh, simple pages with nothing on them. So a little checkerboard happened there, not much. And so overall, um, really what I have to say, you know, switching between if you're using keyboard shortcuts, you, know, you saw a little jump there, not bad, um, but really no issues here. Um, switching between between stuff, uh, between programs, between tabs is smoother on the HP 14. Uh, it looks like it does keep stuff in here a little bit longer. And my guess would be if I started piling on another 10 or 12 tabs, um, we would start to see some, some lag. Um, and I'll just do, I'm just going to duplicate out about five or six more of these guys. Let them all get loaded. And we'll do the same thing over here, kind of our, our last test. And so my guess is if you, um, if you're a type of person that has 20 tabs open at a time, um, a two gig Chromebook is probably not going to be for you. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six instances. One, two, three, four, five, six. So looking the same here. And you're starting to see on the HP like that kind of jumpy. You know, it's not nice and smooth like it was a few minutes ago. It's having some issues. Uh, page data is loading fine. This is still responsive. So that's good to see. Let's see how our forward and back work. So for those of you who don't know, two fingers across can actually uh, 
take you back. That works just fine there. So, again, three finger scrolling is working okay. And this may be a poor test simply because it's the same page loaded in. So it may be cheating a little bit. A little bit of lag, but I mean, we get a lot of tabs open and we got a lot of programs open. So, I mean, the Acer is really holding its own, I think, in terms of two gigs. Now, I did see some performance issues if you're running crouton. So, for me, uh, professionally speaking, I, I need to have, for now, I still need to have crouton running in the background. I don't do a lot in it. I usually just have Inkscape running in it. But I do have to have it. And so, uh, these are things for you to think of. If you're going to have a Chromebook and you're going to try to make it your daily driver, your main device, um, and that's going to require a couple things in that Linux environment. It may be worth thinking through, hey, right now, regardless of what uh, some of these companies put in their devices, a Toshiba upcoming Toshiba Chromebook or a touchscreen on the Acer, and these things seem really compelling. If lots of tabs and needing Linux open are going to be workflow issues for you, those are things to think through um, because those things are going to become frustrating in a short amount of time uh, whenever your tabs are jumping around and stuff won't load and you know, pages are having to reload. But I have to say, uh, not having Linux going in the background, uh, the Acer fared a whole lot better uh, than it did earlier when I had Crouton installed. So thanks, you guys, for uh, kind of pointing that out. I didn't even think about that when I was when I was doing the review and kind of brushed that off. And so uh, I think this, hopefully, this will be a little bit more helpful. If you plan on staying in the Chrome OS operating system and not, not leaving it, I really think there's an argument for saying that 2 gigs is, is enough right now. Um, is it, is it the greatest performance possible? No, not really. Um, you do get a little performance bump out of the four gigs, but only when you're heavily multitasking. Whenever you're keeping it down to four or five tabs and the, and the music player open, I really don't think you're going to see too much of a difference between the two devices. And so uh, it makes me look forward to seeing what the Toshiba can pull off uh, with two gigs of RAM as well. So um, hopefully that device will become uh, fully available actually to order within the next three or four weeks. And I'll get my hands on that and we'll get a review of that going. But um, check out the other videos. Uh, you can subscribe below if you like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Um, also, you'll see in the description uh, a web address, chromeunbox.com. It's where kind of we compile all this stuff together, any kind of latest Chrome news that I think needs to be put out there. I, I try to get on the site. And so uh, the more people that, that come, the, the more probability I'm going to start getting more devices to review and, and more stuff I can pass on to you guys. So, um, so subscribe, like the video, uh, share the website, check it out. I do all those kinds of things. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for uh, just being a part of all this. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.